Good day everyone, my name is Sebastian and today we're going to be starting this series of daily algorithm training. So today we're going to be using the site's code wars and we're going to be checking out the um, the code wars problem plus one array. So given an array of integers of any length, return an array that has one added to the value represented by the array. The array can't be empty. Only non-negative single-digit integers are allowed. Return nil, or your language is equivalent for invalid inputs. Example, the array 239 equals 239. Adding one will return 240. So 2345 would return 4326. So just right off the bat, I see that we're given an array. Um, we need to return an array, but the last digit in the array needs to be increased by one, or if it's the last digit ends in a nine, then um, that needs to increase the second to last digit and the last digit um, by either one or zero, depending on which digit it is. Um, don't see any test cases for negative numbers. Um, <clears throat> and that's because it says only non-negative. So let's just start out by, you know, putting um, some of the, you know, the information we should know about the problem first. So only non-negative, only single uh, digits. Array cannot be empty. Um, then let's say what our inputs are. Um, array of numbers. Let's do single digit numbers. And output, output, array of single digit numbers. Now, how do we go about solving this? So we should probably check if the last number is a nine, the last number in the array is a nine or not. So to do that, we're going to um, get the index of the last number in the array. Check if the last number is a 9. Um, turn. Oh, actually here's a problem. So if all the numbers are a 9, then um, we'd have to check every single digit. So what's probably better to do is to turn the array into a string or into a bunch of numbers and then um, to just increase it and then just turn it back into a string and then split everything again. So to do that we're going to um, join the array into a string turn the string into a number, let's do integer, um, increase integer number by one, um, turn integer number into string, split string into an array um, by digit. So that's, um, we're going to follow those steps and we're going to keep it separated and then at the end we're going to put it all together. I tried to. So join the array into a string. So let's do um, dot join okay 
Um, let's do let string into a very join. Next, we're going to turn the string into an integer number. So let num equal parse int and string. Then we're going to increase the number by one. And num is equal to num plus one. Then turn the integer number into a string. So um, let's do our string. So for a result string, equal to um, num to string. Then uh, let's just do let result equal our string. Um, split, we're going to do split on just each digit. So let's test it out, return the result, let's see what we get. Okay, so we failed, why did we fail? Expected 240, and it got 240, okay, so where are these dash is coming from. Um, so let's look at um, MDM and then let's look at the parse int method. <coughs> So the function parses a string or anything when it turns an integer. <clears throat> okay. Um, we. Okay. So. I don't see anything here that would explain why there are dashes coming through. Um, so similar. We could do a console.log method to find out where um, where this is coming from, where the error is coming from. So let's test it there. And so there you know we argument almost everything except for the last test case. Last test case is not solved here. But let's hold off on that one and let's solve that one later. So when we do this, we see that we're getting the correct digits, but then the dashes are coming apart. So that might have something to do with the split. So let's see why. Um, Let's see what that is. So we're going to do MDM split. And search split method divides a string into an ordered list of substrings. This is substrings into an array and returns the array. The division is done by searching for a pattern where the pattern is provided as the first parameter in the methods call. Um, In this case, it is one that separator is just a single, single character. It is used to split a delimited string. For example, a string containing tab separated values could be parsed by passing the tab character as a separator like this. That's not what I'm interested in. Um,
thinking I could do something like um, do a regex to so just remove each of the um, backslashes, black backslashes. Um, just weird that they're there in the first place. Um, let's see, like, are they here? Mm, let's see, this one, you know that very time. So let's move this. Um, so this is really interesting because when we log result, we're getting the right answer. Um, actually, no, we're not getting the right answer. <laughs> so I missed a thing. Is, um, each of these letters is a string. So, or each of these numbers is a string. So, we now need to convert each one to a number. Um, so, split string into an array by digit. An array of strings. Uh, an array strings by digits. Let's go over here. And let's rename that string array. And let's make a new one. Let result equal string array or string array map um, let's say element let's just say element uh, that's going to be element um, I think just number we can do parse it then we're going to console log it. Okay. So let's see. Okay, so I passed those two tests. So that means that um, result is now an array of numbers instead of an array of strings. Um, I use this map function. Map is a higher order function that takes in an anonymous function uh, with the arrow function notation, which turns each element within the string array, turns it to a numbered element, and returns a new array of only numbers called result, then return result. So now we go ahead and try and solve for the last test case. So, whoops, I'm going to do uncomment those. I'm going to open up this one. So, at this point, I can then loop through each. All right, loop through the array, and I can look if any of the items are negative. I can do that at this point, or I can do that at the very start. Um, for um, making it so that the function will operate as quickly as possible, when there is a null case, I should probably check at the very beginning. So let's do... I can do a very simple um, for each higher order function. So array for each. This is the equivalent to a standard for loop. Um, it's going to loop through each element in the array. And if each element, um, which I'm now going to call each element num, if any of the elements is less than zero, 
it's going to return um, null for the response to uh, as the function output. So, um, so just if um, if none is less than zero, return null. Okay, now let's test. Um, let's see if that one case worked. So it didn't work. Why? Unexpected token if. <clears throat> it says on line 19. Okay. So, um, because this is a higher order function, and this is the um, this is the anonymous function that's on the inside. What's actually happening is null is being returned to here, and it's not causing the function to terminate. So um, what I can do is just use a regular loop. Um, Mm -hmm. um, the regular loop solution will look at this. So for um, let item or let index um, equals zero. I less than array dot length I plus plus. So for every item in the array, if array I is less than zero, return null. And then this line can be deleted. Let's try that out. So that test case now passes. So the reason why the other one didn't work is because the other one had an anonymous function that just returned the value null to that position within the array. This uh, implementation will actually cause the up array function to return null instead of continuing. So now, I can open up all the test cases and see if it still runs, and it does. So now I can attempt to complete. Um, and see if all the other test cases are solved. Well, not the test cases, but the other cases. So past 33, but failed 25. Uh -huh. So I expected null, but got 23, 4. Why would that be? Okay, well, this one could be... Just because no item is being put in, it's just an array of man. So I could have a case here. Actually let's let's look back at it. only non-negative single digits. So what happened is I didn't solve for items that are not single digits. So um, I could add a condition for um, actually I might be able to solve this just right here where if If at the urea index is not greater than zero, return null. Let's see if that solves for it. Um, actually, because false return zero, um, yeah, let's 
let's keep that how it was. So array i greater than zero, or array i um, I could do is number. So let's check. Um, MDN is number or is integer. Um, let's also check the is name. Um, the is name method determines whether a pass value is not a number and its type is number. It's more robust version of the is man. Well, um, okay, so value to be tested for a man. Um, true if the given value is man and its type is number, otherwise false. Um, to the global is man function, the problem of forcibly converting parameter to a number. Uh, okay, so that could be one way. So there's is integer. Um, value to be tested for being an integer, return value of boolean indicating whether or not the given value is an integer. If the target value is an integer, return true. Otherwise, return false. If the value is man or infinity, return false. This seems like it's a good option as well as is man. So um, let's see the exact format for how to enter it. So number is integer, and then in parentheses that comes there. So number is integer. So right now this is checking if this is true. Um, so if array i is greater than zero, it should be less than zero. Or number is integer. I don't want that I want it to be if it is not an integer. Okay, so the um, exclamation point is called the bang operator, and what it does is it makes the statement inverse. All right, let's try this again. We might still have to solve for the big arrays. Hmm. <laughs> Expected null instead got man, man, man. Huh. Why is this? Does it tell us? No. Big arrays. Let's just be curious about what this one is. Um, so yeah, here's one of the issues I was talking about. Um, But that shouldn't be because no. this should return nine. Like, this should have been nine. Um, okay, so what's going on here is that some of the numbers were changed. Let's have in this test case. Okay. So let's remove one. Let's get it to seven. Um, and that should be turn. Um, I 
look at the other ones. Um, 15 at index 0. So the no set dot this. Don't know what that is. Um, and 11 at index 12. Minus expected. Um, no, check no set gap. Interestingly, this was logged because I don't think. Okay, so this is interesting because this should not have been there. Um, so that is a bit bizarre. Seems like within the solution there's a couple bugs that are related to um, numbers not being reattached correctly or split correctly. Some items returning as now. I don't quite understand. Um, well, for now, let's work on the last test case. So, if we just do this. Um, So we got that happening. <laughs> um, so when we should probably check. When we turn the number into, um, when we turn it from a string to a number, so let's see what happens here. So it seems at that location, the number has already been changed. Itself is bizarre. Let's check it out here. Here's what's string. String is 807. Um, let's check at this parse int function and see what it does. Um, does it have a limit to how big the integer can be? unexpected results when used on very large or very small numbers. Um, 
Okay, so parse it may not be correct. If you use parse float, um, cannot be better. So it can convert big integer to numbers. Um, so we should probably just use a number. Seems like that is the immediate solution. Um, let's try. Okay, so now the string is the same, but number still turns out to be wrong result. Um, why is that? Go back here. An array of integers of any length return an array that has one added to the value represented by the array. The array can't be empty, only non negative single digit integers are allowed. Return nil or your language is equivalent for invalid inputs. For example, array 239 equals 239, adding 1 would return the array 240. Going to go off camera and figure it out. After doing some research, I found that one of the issues may have been um, that each, um, not for this um, problem, which is to do with big arrays, but um, with um, one of the input problems, um, specifically when he was returning an array that had a specific um, element that was more than one digit. So to solve for that, I could quickly do an OR case. An array i is greater than nine. And we could attempt with that real quick. Um, see, it's past 35. Um, And that's still a bit strange, big random arrays, because it should should look at that. It should see that it's less than zero. Um, it should return null. Um, mm, yeah, this. This was the case I was trying to solve for. But yeah, turned out it's null. Um, okay, so this, this is interesting because um, this is not an integer number. So it seems like there also needs to be a test case that removes non integer numbers. So let's add that. Um, 
so for um, numbers with more than one digit, non integer numbers, um, negative numbers. Um, let's see what else. Um, okay, well, these might not even be um, decimals, it's just the notation, um, which may be the issue. Um, these are all really big, um, big array problems. Some of them are retained. And, um, so I'm wondering if putting that at the end, putting this loop here at the end might actually be um, the issue, might solve some of the issues. Let's try it. Change everything to result. Let's try it out. Um, this test case was installed, and I actually solved few test cases. Um, So let's just check what the arrays that I entered are. Um, okay, so this one is it's greater than 33. So let's let's take this, let's modify it again, and let's check. So So here I'm checking you know, several test cases. I'm checking if checking if um, if the digit is less than zero, if the digit is greater than zero, uh, or if the number is not an integer. So if it's a decimal number, any of those cases happen it should return null. Let's check. Okay, so this one is returning. Okay, seems like there's another if the length of the array um, is zero, then How did it get one? How did it get one? It adds one to the number, but okay. Um, let's see if that solves that test case. That does not solve it. Um. Try and all of this I know how to do, so I'm gonna take all this away and try again. Let's go through the list. Um, only non-negative, only single digits, 
The ray cannot be empty. Um, Bond negative. Um, cannot be a non integer. And if any of those happen, then it needs to be returned as false. So if length is equal to zero, return null. If array dots, um, that solves for the zero case. Now we need to solve um, for each element within the array. So I'm going to look through for let i equal 0 for the index within the array i less than array length and i will increase with every iteration if I'm going to check a few things um, I'm going to check if the digit is less than 0 or greater than 9 So check if um, number is greater. So let's say a number at array index is greater than or than nine or less than zero. So um, if array i is less than 0, or array i is greater than 9, return null. Okay, let's add some other cases. Um, this has been solved. Um, this has been solved. This has been solved. Now to solve this one. So is there an is is integer? There is. So it's going to test. We need to add in the line that will test every um, item to see if it is an integer or not. If Array i um, so we're going to do not number dot is integer array i. What this says is um, array i is it an integer? Not so if array i is not an integer return null. Okay, so now every single one of these should be solved. Um, can quickly test that out. So past 11 cases. Um, that's fine. Uh, the big arrays, invalid arrays, done, done, done. Um, so still failing the big arrays. Invalid arrays are fine. Basic tests, basic tests. Um, not solving for that. Random tests. Um, okay, that would probably be fine. The big random arrays um, should be able to get them.
Okay. Now let's try and solve for the basic tests. So these are the edge cases. And now basic tests. So um, my strategy here is going to what I want to do is I want to turn the array into a number like I did before. That would be the easiest solution. Um, but I'm thinking there's probably some error when it gets to a big array. So I'm thinking, what if I could take the last element in the array? Um, take the last element in the array. Add one to it. If element is now greater than nine, save one, save one. Um, I want you to make sure here is cool. Um, it's not happening. And that close some programs real quick. Um, okay. Save one. Add save item to the next digit. And we heat until element um, at index is not greater than none. All right. So right now it's an array of numbers, so should be able to do that. So we're going to start at the last um, element in the array. So the last element in the array is the index. Um, we're going to save the location, so minus one. And that is the index of the last element of the array. Now I need to loop through the array and check every one. Let's also make this saved. So it's going to be one or zero. Once saved is zero, it's going to return um, the rest of the items. So um, now I should make a while loop that will loop through the array starting from the negative point until. Um, until it reaches, until saved to zero. So while saved is not equal to zero, 
then what I need to do is I need to take um, let's probably take it index and yeah, no, let's keep that. Um, so um, let's say so I want to set the initial current index I want to send it equal to the last um, it will change with each iteration so if a current is not equal to 9 So if array current at the current index is not equal to 9, I'm going to do array current is equal to array current plus saved. Okay. And else, so if array current is equal to 9, then um, current needs to be subtracted by 1. Current equals current minus 1. Um, and then set equal to zero. Okay. So, um, let's see if it solves the basic cases. I think that is. Oh, and then finally, um, return. Return array. So let's remove the test cases over here. Let's see if they are all solved for. We did not get the last one. Oh. oh. Okay. So. There seems to be an error. If array current is not equal to 9, then add it. Else, um, So what's happening is when array current is nine, um, the nine isn't being changed. So array current If array current is not equal to 9, so if it's 8, then array current equals array current plus saved, and saved will become 0, and it will end. Else, current will be current minus 1.
if a ray count is equal to 9, It needs to be the case where if a count is equal to 9. So this is probably going to have to be an else if. So if a recurrent is equal to 9, to zero. Um, I don't think anything else needs to happen because let's say, let's add in a test case, see what happens. So, test, cert, similar, up array, um, say, five, Nine, 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 and should be six, zero, zero, zero. Because what's going to happen is the first one is going to turn into zero, and one's going to be past here. Then turn to zero, one is going to be past here. Um, so it's going to turn to zero, one is going to be past here, so six. Okay, let's try that. Okay, two fail. Um, all right. Um, ah, probably also need to update current. Right, our current, current minus one. Try it again. Yes. Okay. Update current uh, index in the value. Oh. Update index in value. Um, update, I guess the value is safe, the value, set saved to zero, and terminate, um, set condition to terminate the loop. Um, that will need to be index. And then return. So, that is the solution. Let's see if it solves all of them. Still failing one. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, this is a true. So, um, any thoughts. So if there is not an index zero that is less than nine, shift and a um, value of one.
So I can add that here. If current um, so now it's actually interesting because well no um, if current is less than zero then I'm going to do two things. I'm going to break out of the while loop manually, and I'm going to shift in the one value. Then, so let's shift the array. Unshift, sorry, unshift. So, break. Let's test. I'm still in pass, so let's save it. Then let's comment out all of those. Let's see. This one's a lot. Oh, this one's a lot of Um, am I using the only open shift? Turns to me like um, so it changes the array. What am I doing there? Um, Oh, let's see. I haven't modified any of the other values. So... Um...
what I can actually do is take length of array, make a new array, with um, this number being one and all remaining numbers being zero. So Um, equals how would I do that into then um, two one on cats array see what happens All right, so I did figure it out. Um, where we left off was I had had this section of code um, where current, which is the current index within my array, going from the end to the front. If that is less than zero, um, before this case was in the else statement here, but now I have it in the else statement because when um, every value was nine and then it reached the very beginning of the array where there was no more value, it wasn't um, reaching the else case anymore. It was terminating here um, and then going to line 70. So um, what I should do is add this um, case where if current is less than zero, then find the length of the array, make a new array, um, taking the length of the old array, adding um, the number one to the front of that array, and then filling the new array with the length of the old one and the value of zero. Um, that ended up being the solution, so if I submit, oh, I submit with all the comments, um, we can see it works. Now, we can see that this is a bit of a complicated kata because um, even the really good solutions um, are still quite long, so you can see this one. And, um, people who came up with it, you know, they look at the type of the array, they check if it's undefined, if it's null, or if it's length zero, um, that then they return null. I did something quite similar, and then the next part they loop over the array length. Um, they see if each item is less than zero. If the type of item is not number, or if it's greater than nine, I also did something similar. Um, then they're gonna check if it's nine and more than one digit. Then we have to check all previous digits. Um, all right, so also did something similar. So um, they take var j is the array length minus one. 
and while j is greater than negative 1, decrement j. So if rj is not equal to 9, then rj equals rj plus 1, and break. Yeah, okay. Else rj is equal to 0. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, so I probably should have done that as well. Um, and if j is equal to zero, then um, yeah, if it gets to zero, then our unshift one. Um, very similar solutions to my own. The difference would be um, their base or their terminating case is a bit better. They say. Um, are there, this part is better, their for loop right here is equivalent to my while loop. Um, although for mine, I don't reassign each index to zero. Um, that is a way that I could have done better there. Now, um, actually, if we go to the one below, right here, we see an even better solution. We see. Um, Uh, see, they're looking at the array length, um, and they're filtering every item to see if x is less than 0 or x is greater than 9. Um, then they're taking the length of all of those. Um, if it's greater than 0, then they're going to make it null if any of these cases evaluate to true. Um, it's going to become null. Else, they're going to make a new big number. They're going to join whatever string that is, then they're going to add one to it. They're going to do two precision. I'm not quite aware of what two precision is. Um, let's find that. Okay. Two position method returns a string representing the number of the two specified precision. So we see number parse float x to position four. Okay, so it just rounds the last number. Um, so precise x, yeah, so it just makes it number plus four more. Um, what did the fourth digit? Um, yeah. So I guess just four digits out. Okay, so yeah, there's a significant number like in chemistry, which the reality is wouldn't really even use that when I did chemistry. <laughs> okay, that's the solutions.